Hello, everyone. Before I begin, I'd like to tell you a real story about my cat, Lucky. Lucky here loves to eat. However, Lucky's food is located in her owner, Dujain's room. Much to the cat's dismay, Dujain likes to keep her door closed, isolating Lucky from her source of nutrients and happiness. To combat this inconvenience, Lucky, much to her owner's surprise, learns to scratch at the door, brainwashing her owner into opening it for her. Not only that, but she takes it a step further by pushing the door wide open when she sees that it's lightly cracked. Over time, Lucky here seems to connect between pushing at the door and getting to her food. Surprisingly enough, Lucky displays signs of what's called neuroplasticity. I know the word may sound like a mouthful, but let's go ahead and break it down into three parts. Neuro, which refers to the nerves or the nervous system. Plastic, which means exhibiting adaptability and icity, a suffix that refers to the state, quality, or behavior of something. Putting two and two together, we can understand that neuroplasticity is the nervous system's ability to adapt to its ever-changing environment. I know the word sounds scary, but simply put, neurons in your brain change the connections between them, depending on how and how often you repeat a certain action. The more you repeat a task, the stronger the connections between your neurons, and the more automatic and familiar this habit becomes to your brain. First, we need to understand how habits work with regard to neuroplasticity. Have you ever dreamt of something wonderful? Perhaps you got an unexpected day off from school, or your parents surprised you with a pet rabbit, but you were very rudely interrupted by the ringing of your alarm clock right before you got to the good part. In this situation, many of you would simply press the snooze button and get right back to sleep, desperate to continue the dream or the blissful sleep. Over time, as you repeat this, a habit forms, and you find your hand subconsciously going to the alarm clock. Surprisingly enough, this process here is not random. It actually follows a three-part pathway. Cue, routine, and reward. In this situation, being woken up by the alarm is the cue. When you hear the alarm, you immediately press the snooze button. That is routine. The brain likes to sleep, so it holds on to this pattern to implement it the next time your alarm goes off. That is reward. As you repeat this, a habit forms, and you subconsciously and automatic, automatically respond to the cue. Because of the brain's reward system, habits, whether positive or negative, they stick. Because in this situation, your brain liked the reward it got from sleeping, it immediately prompted you to press the snooze button, even though doing this can cause you to perhaps run late to school or miss out on an important event. An inseparable part of neuroplasticity is repetition, which increases neural connections and makes habits more automatic. This explains why pianists can easily play a piece of music without even looking at the piano keys. Regularly practicing a skill or hobby like playing the piano increases connections between your brain cells which makes it easier for, the, for your brain to follow this newly formed pathway. In fact, 1,000 to 10,000 repetitions are needed for a single skill. Animal studies have shown that difficult functional jobs like fine motor skills require a whopping 400 to 600 repetitions per day.
I'm almost certain that many of you love it when your parents, teachers, or colleagues acknowledge your hard work by offering a reward, right? Well, the nervous system and the brain work in a very similar way. Usually, habits form because the brain is constantly looking out for actions that deliver a hit of its reward chemical. When you perform such an action, the brain immediately connects between action and satisfaction, which rewires your brain to, to repeat this action. This produces emotions and creates a habit. Have you ever tried going to the gym regularly but quickly gave up because after each session, you flexed your biceps but found no muscle in sight? This is because, according to MIT researchers, habits with delayed rewards are harder to form, while those with instant rewards are so much easier to form. Because you don't instantly see results, you can find it more difficult to continue this habit. Now that we know how habits form, how do we use that to our advantage to, our advantage, to consciously make and break them? Imagine this, you are a basketball player and a huge fan of the sport. You live, breathe, and eat on basketball. Naturally, you aim to be a professional basketball player, right? However, you notice that your skills are somewhat rough, certainly not befitting of a professional basketball player. The best course of action would be to make practice a habit. But how? Let's use what I call the STIR method. Specific attention. Make sure to solely focus on getting better. I'm not telling you to abandon everything else, but make time for basketball practice if you wanna see results. Time. Functional and structural neuroplastic change takes time. So be patient with yourself and plan for lapses. For example, consider that you may fall ill or lose some motivation. Think about how you would bounce back from that and, schedule, and change your schedule accordingly. Intention. The sport you're playing must have some meaning, relevance, or importance to you. Think about why you want to play basketball. Is it a love for the sport? Could it be money? Make sure it matters to you personally. I'd also like to add that many habits may not seem relevant or worthy to us, like studying. But it is important to find meaning in them because they often offer a reward much later in life that is long-term. And finally, repetition. Shorter bouts of intense practice are usually needed to create a habit. So keep yourself in check and analyze your progress regularly. The second and final point I'd like to talk about is operant conditioning, which uses the brain's preference for dopamine to make and break habits. For example, your parents may reward you as long as you study. This causes a connection in your brain between action, studying, and satisfaction, the reward, making you repeat this habit more often. This means that if you want to keep a habit, you can pair it with a reward, such as going out for a walk or playing a sport that you like. In a nutshell, neuroplasticity is the nervous system's structural and functional way of adapting to its ever-changing environment. Using neuroplasticity, we can gain deeper insight into the workings of habits to make conscious, informed decisions. Simply, today, I'd like you to take away one of many insights. The human body is a wonderful thing. And more often than not, exploring its fascinating intricacies is one of many ways to not only wonder about the world around us, but to also make informed, conscious decisions to lead us forward. Thank you for listening.